Chris, why don't we go ahead and get started? So uh, really just hoping to provide in as much as I'm able without violating NDA, et cetera, et cetera, around what to expect out of the S Corp exam. And truly based on now, I've, you know, it's that kind of combination of, you know, exam prep and prep to teach uh, that, yeah, it's definitely geared towards certification, the class and the exam uh, content. Uh, less about okay. skills, I would say. Uh, less skills oriented than the uh, SISE exam was, I would say, um, interestingly enough. So, uh, yeah, that's basically the idea. Uh, just to go through and review the topics uh, where you may be aware of some of this already, I'll make sure and provide some assurances about the, uh, the no doubt about it aspects there. Um, and, and then probably worth uh, at least for any kind of consideration, what exactly uh, is involved in the S core course content itself, if you're considering taking that course. Uh, maybe try out some example questions. I found that the sample questions out of the course content were pretty, yeah, of the feel, type and feel that were in the actual exam. So I found that to be helpful. Um, <clears throat> and I'll take, uh, <coughs> excuse me take advantage of the fact that I've got access to that course content because I've not been able to find decent example questions anywhere, really. So I'll give you an idea of what's actually uh, on there. We can take advantage of that. I don't see any problem with that. Uh, make awesome. sure uh, you're aware and as any certification pursuer or maintainer would be uh, awareness of the new uh, continuing education program. They've actually had it in place for a while, but it's been revamped with the new uh, professional tracks uh, certification. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of take a look through that too. Uh, I've got the link up here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and I'll kind of walk through my notes here. Um, and uh, I suppose uh, maybe if we can just to kind of go back to the top here. I'm not logged in. I'm not using my CCO account here. So uh, just from the main homepage, more and then certifications, professional, CCMP security gives an overall idea of the track and what's required. And then open up this in a new tab. And yeah, uh, pretty brief information on this page. The most detailed uh, info is within this exam topics button. And uh, the score report that I got was based on uh, that they scored me on these categories. And and then the, and the categories as you list out, yeah, it's, uh, I would say as I reviewed these categories, pretty healthy coverage in the exam of all of it that they they're out of these topics i would say there were many that were not touched on in some fashion with respect to the the coverage now it's interesting that the this layout of topics does not really conform to what they've got in the layout of the course itself, right? So they're just the topics in the exam itself and not the not necessarily how the course is laid out per se. Uh, it obviously relates, but yeah, it's not, not uh, uh, you know, directly relatable. Um, the the other thing I've noticed, uh, <laughs> and I always have, I always think it's like, what sort of not say is like uh, the uh, that they I couldn't find anywhere like they used to do. I know they used to do this where uh, they would list the approximate number of questions that you might encounter, and I haven't seen that listed anywhere uh, either. So yeah, um, I was looking for that myself too. Yeah. <laughs> What I, I think pre pretty safe to say, be because, you know, there's going to be variations over time, and I can talk about that with my notes a little bit, but uh, not quite double the number of questions that I got on the SISE exam. So no, it, was a, it was definitely a much more, but not quite double. 
And I think that's okay. probably safe to say that. Um, and then, yeah, two hours uh, for the, uh, they do list that 120 minute uh, window for the exam itself. I made it through in just over an hour. It took me just okay. over an hour. Uh, kind of back to my notes. Um, yeah, in, in as general and specific, specifically general fashion as I can apply the, uh, the, the list of products and solutions, we'll pro probably want to go back and kind of look through there uh, in terms of the things that are covered within the content itself that they pretty much hit on all of those within the exam and it basic, you know, what, what the product or solution is. And, and of course the capabilities, you know, around that product, um, you know, by name and capability. And that covered the, the, you know, the, the, both the appliances as well as the cloud-based solutions. Um, they had, a, and they do point out, I'm sure you spotted that this is now also the uh, written uh, exam portion of CCIE security, right? So they definitely had some of those kind of questions in there where your first lecture going, what the, no, you know, you're just going, no, no. That, and it really had to kind of, you know, step back and look at it a little bit. And um, uh, it, it was definitely, had, it, it kind of, I don't know how to describe it best, just a really out of the box way to ask the kind of question that they were asking. Okay, um, yeah, that was going to be my one major question was how was it really towards like because I saw that it was the it was the CCIE written test. I was like, uh, okay, so is this right. like going to be way out there or is it? it is it? It not did remind bad? me, and now it's been a long time, but way back when I first, it was probably about two or three years in as an instructor, um, I took a shot at the CCIE uh, route switch. Uh, and my first attempt was all, all the way back when it was still a two-day lab, and the second attempt was on a one-day lab. I didn't pass, didn't pass either one, obviously. But the uh, uh, the the written exam and the and and in, in effect the content of the the lab itself, just this kind of thing. It's like stuff that you would just never you would never consider it the way that they're asking you to. It's like it's like that is not a solution you would ever. Unless, you know, I mean, it's just so out there, right? And it's kind of just really, uh, and it, um, I would say com <laughs> just a completely weird way to ask what they were asking about, but uh, no questions that were, um, uh, no questions that I would say that were bad, right? Like a, a little, a little off on occasion. Not as many off questions as I saw on the SISE, uh, SISE, uh, SISE exam, right? Where they're a little like, mm, that's all right. <laughs> that's not the way I, you know, I, I'll let you have, you know, it was kind of one of those, I didn't run into uh, really any of those, I would say, on the S core exam. Right, that they were all okay. pretty valid questions, right? Um, and, but just yeah, really screw a couple of them. And I would say there was a good, um, yeah, there's a good handful or more questions that were just going, wow, <laughs> wow, that's crazy, that's crazy. Uh, so yeah, thinkers. Um, um, and then uh, for the uh, places where policy can be applied. And that's a pretty decent number of products in this course. Understand what those policy variations are all about. So it's really, um, you know, along the lines of, uh, yeah, would be something along the lines of, say, like NAT policy uh, on maybe an FTD or an ASA, uh, you know, something along those lines. Or, um, uh, maybe the, uh, policies related to uh, recipients on the on the email security appliance you know just what what would I be doing those for some of the terms applied for that and then in some cases uh, ha toggling on for options with respect to said policy uh, it, that, a couple of those so uh, yeah, I, I I can't can't be much more specific than than that. Um, pretty good handful of questions around each of the major products. Uh, it really did feel like 
based on what's covered in the course that they the exam hit on pretty much all of those. It did feel pretty good with respect to the amount of time I've spent in the book so far that they did not go out of outside of that book, which I thought was nice. There was maybe a couple of questions um, that, yeah, but for the most part, I felt like that they stayed in bounds, unlike some of the other in fact, I think SISE went out of bounds a, a, a pretty healthy amount, honestly, outside of the course. I, I, I think you're right with that. And, uh, and, and that's and, like a change of pace for them to, to, to not go Yeah, exactly. I was that's, surprised. That's their normal. I, I, exactly. I did not anticipate that. That was unexpected. So they stayed in bounds pretty well. Um, and then you know my background, and without a doubt that helped. I mean, dude, I've been the, the last two years teaching these products. Um, uh, you know, ASA, FTD, uh, ISE, and in that, <laughs> I'm di it's not a fair fight with a guy like me because I'm di I'm doing nothing but Cisco security. So I'm drinking the Kool Aid, as it were, um, and um, the terms, the things, the tactics that they're trying to apply. Let's uh, looks like we've got Solly joining in here. I'll wait till he. Well, I'll go ahead and move along here. Uh, so yeah, Chris, uh, one of my previous students, we're just kind of going through what I encountered in the exam, which I passed uh, just yesterday. The first time here, welcome, welcome, Solly. And so yeah, just discussing with Chris, who uh, attended one of my classes in December, and uh, also passed the exams associated with that, which is the SISE, uh, that's part of the CCMP security track, uh, and was able to pass that exam. Well, hopefully, I helped out a little bit with that. It was pretty fresh exam there. But um, I just passed S-Core yesterday and uh, was reviewing those. Um, we took advantage of the link I provided there to review the basic exam topics, which are pretty vast. Um, uh, they pointed out as the, the details that I could provide have to correspond to with what they provide. Uh, so yeah, 120 minute exam, which is longer than normal, usually they're 90 minutes, I think. And uh, the uh, quantity of questions is not listed anywhere. And I described to Chris that it was not quite double the number of questions that were on the SISE exam, which I think was a pretty standard number of questions for a Cisco exam, if you've taken Cisco exams before. So uh, it is listed, uh, it's CCA security, so a clear understanding that this exam applies pretty broadly. And so, yeah, it's pretty vast in that regard. And this is the written portion of the CCIE security certification, as well as what's needed for the CCMP security track. Uh, and then uh, just in quick review, yeah, understanding, well, I'll, I'll go through this, uh, uh, some the products uh, solutions that are covered in the course itself. Um, I uh, and, and so uh, having to understand what they are and their capabilities uh, would be important for the exam. Uh, I described a decent number of strange questions, which um, I'll, I'll put on the category just since really out of the box way to ask about a, a, a particular area, technical area or function. Just really when you look at what they were presenting to you and the questions that they asked, really, really kind of, I, I think almost intentionally trying to throw you off a little bit, uh, but still valid. Um, so if you've taken other Cisco exams before, um, Aaron, welcome aboard. I'm just gonna keep on rambling along and I'll let you uh, ask questions uh, as they seem appropriate there for you. Um, but welcome. Um, the, uh, 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 yeah, uh, CTIE written type questions. I, I would put those into the category. Just stuff that that they expect more from a CCIE, and they were kind of on those kind of category questions. Not a huge number, but uh, enough to just wow. <laughs> you know, just yeah, really make you think. Um, and then uh, for uh, along again the questions to understand for the products that are covered, uh, policy variations. So the type of policies that can be applied, the terms associated with those policies, 
and then maybe some of the options with respect to that. And then for pretty much any of the products where policy can be applied. So uh, this could be along the lines of, say, network address translation policy on FTD or ASA. Uh, could be uh, 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 inbound recipient policy on an ESA. Uh, yeah, just different variations on stuff there. Good handful of questions around each of the major products are covered in the course content. Uh, felt all products were covered in some fashion to some degree in uh, uh, kind of unusual based on my recent exam experience, which is pretty reasonable, I would say, compar comparatively, uh, that there were not a large number of questions that I could identify that seemed to fall outside of the course content which is pretty unusual. In fact, unusual comparison to the SISE exam, which Chris also passed and also agreed on, that there were a decent number of questions that were outside of the course content within that exam. This exam, not so much, at least for the group of questions I got. And I'll provide some of those caveats as well. Uh, true experience is gonna help substantially. I uh, am an instructor of uh, two ASA product training courses, uh, two firepower product training courses, the ISE, and a couple others. Uh, and I've been doing that in high concentration for the last two years solid. And it's not a, and I, and I, uh, taking exams for me is just part of the job. My company pays for them. I, I, it's a requirement of my job as a CCSI. So my exam taking realm is like not a, it's not a fair comparison of most individuals outside of this realm. So I pass it on the first attempt. I don't think that's going to be an easy get for most. Um, I bear, I would say barely passed it. I, I, I got about 30 points above the threshold. So I didn't, it wasn't stellar. <laughs> I wasn't certain, but I, I was able to get it knocked out. Um, let's take a look at this. Um, uh, let's go out here first. Uh, this is the CERNI Cisco Learning Network. You can search on that. This is different than the Cisco Learning Network store, which is where you buy their ELT. Uh, formatted type training content. Uh, this is kind of supposed to provide a basis for exam takers, preppers. It's sort of, of course, if I click on the exam topics, it'll, it'll take us back out to that uh, same page that's listed under the certification track itself. And then uh, this is nice in terms of asking general questions on the track itself and so fellow exam preppers, um, I thought this was pretty cool that they provided these basic training videos. And they, at least from the quick review, pretty decent. So um, take a look at this one real quick, just to show, give you an idea. These are no cost. Um, just have to schedule and launch them. They don't correspond directly to the S-Core content, but kind of cover those topic areas. A pretty healthy amount of quick stuff just to, uh, again, to kind of get up to speed on stuff. So uh, pretty cool in that regard. Um, and then additional resources. And uh, let's go out to this really quickly. This provides a pretty good overview of what's in the S-Core course itself. And let's look at the outline. Yeah, <laughs> this is a uh, basic order of events for the five-day S-Core class. And, um, uh, where uh, you, Aaron, I don't know if you've attended one of my classes. I know Chris has. I'm I'm kind of I'm one of those. I, I like to, in as much as I can, apply 
the skills where they're not directly offered in the training content themselves, like what, stuff that'll help you out in the real world. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of how I like to think about it. This course allows me almost no room at all for that. So it, within the amount of time and the number of topics that have to be covered, um, that it's all going to be about getting the nuggets of knowledge you need to get through it help with that exam. It's very exam oriented content, I would say. Um, it, it's not, it doesn't make it bad in any way. I think it's just those expectations. If you're hoping to learn, say, uh, I, you'll get to be able to be having discussions about umbrella. It won't make you proficient at umbrella. Right, so it gives you enough of that, you know, elevator conversation around umbrella, that kind of stuff. And you know, we're with technical proficiency and background, um, uh, helpful in that regard. Right, it doesn't not enough to do an install, but enough to think about a, a possible solution kind of concept. Um, but it kind of goes all over. The, so some of it's very product oriented. Some of it gets into uh, uh, tactics, it, it, technology. It, it's it's just all over. It's all over. Um, and so um, and there would be that it, with <laughs> the, that I would d directly correlate what we're seeing listed here is content covered in the course as being yeah, correlated to what you would expect on the exam. So uh, where I mentioned earlier in my notes to expect a handful of questions on each of the products covered, right? They are going through a large number of products. Uh, they had uh, questions really as I'm looking at it, it seemed like they touched a little bit on each of these. So um, have that kind of expectation. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm still honestly feeling a little anxious about leading this course because, yeah, it's kind of an awful setup. They, uh, I don't like it. I don't know if, let's see if they offer this here. Yeah, uh, this kind of describes some of what they've done. So uh, I'm personally not very happy about it, but the e-learning package that's sold on the Learning Network store gives you basically eight days of access. That's eight days of content, and that's eight days of content regardless of how it's packaged. So if you come to my ILT class, there's five days in the classroom with me, and the hands-on lab practice is limited currently to 10 hours a day and only for the duration of the five days that you're in the classroom and then plus three days of self-paced material, which some of that has labs associated with it, but you're not necessarily, that access has to be carved out of the time window that we have for each day. So yeah, it's a very awkward setup for an ILT class. It's kind of be one of those where, uh, in as much as I possibly can ahead of leading the class, trying to make sure people understand what to expect. It's really about certification prep. It really is. It's very boot campy in, in regard to the amount of content and the style. Um, and, and there you go. Uh, and that's kind of what I have to say about that. Um, let's take a look. Really quickly. Um, one of the other things that I was pointing out to Chris was the um, lack of example questions. 
And so I, 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 if there's, if there's some posted elsewhere, I've been able to find any example questions, S core example questions outside of Cisco. And I haven't looked anywhere else. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, there's really not much out there. Uh, there's, uh, uh, if I can kind of go back here, see if I can pull that up. They have this little window. I'm in the wrong place again, but uh, I, I won't go back there. But they had a little box where it, it, it seemed to indicate that there was example questions, and it's just not an example questions. It kind of gives you an idea of what what it's like to take a Cisco exam, but doesn't show anything directly related as core example questions. So uh, what I'm pulling up here, and I need to put it on the correct screen, and kind of give you an idea this is the of course actual course content and just as described in what we were looking at earlier yeah it's it's a it's going to be a busy it's going to be a busy week while i'm in the middle of that let's take a look um i did find i was as i was relating to chris that the basic style of these challenge questionnaires within the course content offered a pretty decent comparison to the actual exam content. And so, uh, yeah, kind of taking a look at this, uh, uh, ASA forwards packets based on different parameters when running in routed uh, and versus transparent, which parameter is the packet forty process on the ASA running in transparent mode based on? Yeah, here, here, this uh, second one, very, very similar to what I was describing as policy type questions. So understanding the behavior on an ASA, what the different security levels mean in contrast with one another and the behavior that you would get out of that scenario. In this case, the only thing that's odd is that we've got two DMZ interfaces, both with security level 50. And they, and they again, pretty clearly defined. So yeah, using the default parameters, so uh, yeah, kind of makes it pretty clear how to answer. And I would say the, the real exam questions are very similar. Uh, what's true about an ASA network object group? I think I got this wrong when I went through this the first time. And then what NAT config is required when host from a slash 24 subnet on the inside require translation to a single IPv4 address, but only when they're connecting to the particular host in the outside NAT domain. So policy NAT for that. Uh, access rules, interface access rules permit or deny network applications to establish their sessions through the security appliance based on different info which of these three options are the access rules placed and yet there was a few multi choices like that global acl uh, again policy what actions can be applied to a traffic class and layer five through seven policy map and then at asa active standby fail uh chris b for number one yes uh and then uh nice about the online version is that it actually provides the answers they felt were correct i found this to be pretty good as well some of these challenge questions and some of the content i've found to be somewhat questionable this was pretty good this stuff's pretty good. And I would recommend that. Uh, the course content, I think I made those notes somewhere. Yeah, uh, I kind of said it here the, at this last bullet. Uh, this would be one of the few times I'd really recommend coming to class to pass the exam. The, the, in a particular getting access to the actual course content through whatever means I I have a difficult time promoting e-learning uh, e 
Um, but in some cases, it's it's a valid choice. There's no doubt about it. Um, I just have to. It's I'm self promoting without a doubt. So um, um, I would say coming to my class would be pretty helpful <laughs> with respect to passing the exam. Um, that that I can kind you know I can kind of do that thing where I can kind of suggest uh, focus areas as we come across them in the content would be that kind of thing and ways to different ways to think about stuff that might be helpful that don't come out of the course content itself. How's that sound? Selling myself there a little bit. So in, uh, so in the ILT instructor led training for S core and, and myself as an instructor. Um, the uh, links, uh, hopefully, I, I, I've been going back and forth through these slides. It was more uh, relying on the actual published content on their resources. And I kind of got to stick by that both as a CCSI and now CCMP security. Um, I, yeah, I really have to be kind of vague on some things. Just kind of has to be that way. Um, I wanted to point this out where, uh, for again, it, it's hard for me to recommend S Core as somebody that's trying to improve their skills. It's just not the. It's just yeah. It's it's not that it won't improve your skills. It's just yeah. <laughs> uh, the intent is to become aware. I would think it's it's all about product and technology awareness. That's a skill. And so that's kind of what the skill is focused on. Um, around that, and then that pursuit of cert certification, uh, it can, the maintenance of certification, as we're all kind of kind of going through that right now, uh, they just revamped this. If you do a search on the Google or Cisco's main homepage for Cisco Continuing Education, it will take you right here. Um, I provided the link there in my slide deck as well. Uh, bottom line, this has given us the opportunity to consider not having to take an exam to maintain a CCNP or a CCNA. And so you sit or attend a class, buy an e-learning kit, that that will count towards continuing education credit for any of your existing certifications. Uh, they've had this in place for some time, but it was uh, exclusive to CCIE recertification re uh, up until the new CCMP tracks were announced. Then they revamped this. And so your opportunity to not uh, have you or your company pay for a $400 exam that you may or may not pass on that, that attempt that you're given, um, this is an opportunity to maintain that CCMP level cert uh, without having to uh, uh, sit the exam. And so uh, along with uh, eligible courses, uh, Cisco Live Sessions. Um, I'm thinking, I, I, you know, the, this program is of no advantage to me for what I'm doing because I, I still, it doesn't matter. I still have to pass the exam as an instructor. It doesn't matter about continuing education. I still have to pass that exam. So um, I haven't investigated this deeply. Uh, one of my fellow CCIEs, uh, she is uh, heavily invested in this uh, uh, so she doesn't have to sit that CCIE exam. Um, and um, the, I, she would have more details, but I know now like with the last Cisco Live or the, uh, excuse me, the upcoming Cisco Live is basically squashed as far as a live event. It's all remote virtual type event. And I've signed up for a few of those, registered for those, been confirmed to be in attendance for those. Uh, these were customer connection sessions, so not really breakout sessions, so may not apply. But I know they're doing that same basic format for the other sessions. I don't know about the fees involved, but basically you can attend Cisco Live without being actually physically there. And those, I'm sure, would count that if you registered and effectively attended those breakout sessions, et cetera that they would count towards continuing education. Um, what the quantities are required, I know, and there's restrictions like you have to submit for your points within 90 days of the event and uh, et cetera. So it's not like there's, you know, it's plug and play on your part, but the thing that you now don't have to do is sit that exam 
uh, potentially to maintain your existing certification. So want to make sure uh, that you guys were aware about that Siskin continuing education program. And I dropped my slide deck there. And that's all I had with respect to stuff that I specifically want to make sure to mention and kind of open it up now, certainly uh, for any kind of questions, things that I might be able to help out with the respect to the S core course or exam. No, I got, I got no questions. I uh, just wanted to say that you're uh, as far as uh, I'm concerned, you're a really good instructor. Uh, remotely, never, never been in person, so <laughs> right on. Can't, right. can't comment on that one. <laughs> right on. <You're, laughs> remotely, really cool. pretty good. Right on, right on. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. And thank you, thank you. I appreciate it as well. I dialed in a little late because I was yeah. on the road. Yeah, Aaron. Out. Yeah, um, we'll have this. I've recorded this session. Um, I don't know how long it'll take for them to process and publish it up on our on our next. Um, but they just renamed it. It used to be called a virtual resource library. But yeah, uh, anyway, that, that's, uh, it'll be posted up here shortly. So that recording will be there. And I'm doing effectively a repeat of this same session, same time uh, tomorrow afternoon. So 1 p.m. Mountain Time tomorrow afternoon. Sounds good. I'll be okay. going through this again if you'd like to uh, come back for that. So. Sure. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Hopefully this was helpful. And... Um, and uh, yeah, I guess with that, uh, I wish you a, a good rest of your day.